I've already gone into great detail the problems with Power of the Primes, and most people have online as well. It was white noise. Everything was just boring. And then of course there was Volcanicus who was a piece of sh**. But the Legends lineup continued to be strong as ever. Sure, there were a couple of missteps, such as with Wind Charger and Tailgate. You know, why don't they have a Thice Rebel? It's kind of a given, something you need to have. But for the most part, it was a pretty solid lineup. One of the more interesting character implementations was the advent of Slash, who had originally been an Age of Extinction Dinobot exclusive, as far as I can tell. That being said, who on earth can you retool or redeco this into? Yeah, the Dinobots got retooled into the Terracons, but. Who could you retool this one into? Hmm? Ah, oh, yeah, that could work. So I presume some people will be asking why make a female Dinobot in the smaller legend scale that doesn't interact with the larger Dinobot combiner? Although I will be honest, that's probably for the best seeing how bad Volcanicus ended up in the end. Yikes. Well, maybe it was to make the Clever Girl reference, maybe it was just so they could have a Legends class figure to fill the gaps, but whatever the case is, this isn't the first instance of a small female Velociraptor Dinobot. The first instance was actually the fans project version under the name Chimera, which predates this design. It's kind of a weird coincidence, I don't think there was any foul play there or anything, it's just something that ended up happening. And of course when we needed a repaint out of it, because every Legends figure apparently needs a repaint except for Battle Trap, well, they decided to go for one of the Fire Cons with Cyndasaur. Bit of a weird one, and I hadn't intended on getting this one originally, but it was sitting on a shelf and I had some extra cash, so I thought, why not? Funny thing about this one though, is he a male? Is she a female? I don't know, the character cards seem to flip between the two. So I'm just going to call her a female simply because that was the one that I got with my character card, but I'm sure there are several in the wilds that use some of the male cards, because the interesting thing about the collector's cards is there were 13 variants of each for each of the 13 primes. But anyway, starting off with Slash here, absolutely lovely detail. Of course, you do have to contend with quite a bit of belly kibble here thanks to the way the legs work, and there is a pretty hollow section in there, but there's enough here to really allow you to enjoy the design. I love what they've done in general with the Power of the Primes Dinobots. The rest of the Dinobots are pretty terrible, but one of the things they really did well was replicate the G1 clear plastic over the gold by having it entirely clear plastic with gold paint on one side. Wonderful way to do that. Nice red piercing eyes and an overall lovely design. They've even got some of the gold details back here, which is a very nice touch. The legs are done pretty well, I mean you can sort of tell that they're just arms with the fists there, but they've got some nice contouring overall. Funny thing about the back is you're supposed to be able to fit a Titan or Prime Master in there, but it doesn't look very good. You kind of have to end up breaking the knees of the Prime or Titan Master that you put in there, so it looks very unnatural, it's not very good. Still, on her own, Slash is a very lovely design in general, with some nice paint details to help with the robot mode that have the effect of helping the beast mode look pretty nice on its own. Cyndasaur's not as elegant, unfortunately. The color breakup isn't that great with a huge abundance of purple plastic and paint here. It just doesn't really look that great. They've still got the clear plastic, but they've painted wholly over it, instead just allowing a little bit of the clear plastic to shine through on the shoulders here. I am a bit concerned about those clear shoulders because of the way the joints are designed. It may shatter in the future, but for now it's pretty good. They have gone to the trouble of painting the tail though, so it does look a little bit different. As a homage goes, it's alright, but at some point I would like to get the fire cons done properly. Maybe at the Legend scale, maybe at the Deluxe scale, just in general it would be cool to have full updates. Sort of like the monster bots in the Titan's Return line, but what we have here is alright. But somehow, due to the way the paint works, the chest cavity is far more prominent, I'm not sure how. Another issue that affects both figures is that this part does not tab in at all. It just kind of sits there. That really should have tabbed in, that's not excusable. But anyway, in terms of articulation, you've got ball joints here that don't really get much out due to the way the kibble works. You get a swivel thanks to the arm articulation, as with the knee bend. You can untab this and allow that to move in a bit, but it doesn't really look that great. Tail also wags up and down if you so desire. It's not actually that bad for a beast mode, you even get some head articulation along with that there, and... 
a jaw. They managed to actually allow you to open up the jaw. Nice touch, I'll admit. It is a nice touch. For a size comparison, here they are next to a standard Legion figure, a standard Legends figure, a standard Siege Micromaster, a not-so-standard Lego minifigure, and crumbs. Transformation as per usual is quite simple. You want to bring this section all the way back like so. That will allow you to bring the dino head in there and then collapse that. It unfortunately doesn't go all the way, but it does, you know, sit there comfortably. You then bring the tail back. Unfortunately, it doesn't tab in, but it does remain there solidly enough to, you know, help the transformation stay together. You can then just bring these back here to get them out of the way. And then basically, you just bring the arms down, come around and untab the feet so that they just sit behind there. You untab the legs over here, the robot legs, not the dino legs, and fold them all the way out. Come around here and bring out the robot feet from in there like so they just pop out like so and from there what you want to do is untab them like so and then rotate the thighs around 180 degrees and the end result is quite nice actually and in robot mode you can start to see why Cindersaur had so many issues in her beast mode because well they were trying to prioritize the robot mode and they had two runners of purple plastic. Whereas you take a look here and you've got the red, the black and the gray. But overall they both look really, really nice. I have to admit that Slash looks a little bit better. Unfortunately there's not much gold on show except for these tiny little paint apps here and would have liked a little bit more gold in general. But what we do have here is pretty nice. You've got the nice silver shoulders and I'm glad they didn't try to match the gray plastic. They gave some more definition on those. The head sculpt is fine. It fortunately differentiates itself from the fans project Chimera version so that they don't claim that they stole the design or anything. In general it's pretty good. Unfortunately you've got the huge mess of kibble on the back but in general it's a very nice robot mode. I especially like that they've added paint to the legs. Without that it might have looked a little bit boring. But credit where credit is due, Cindersaur is also really lovely. Not as good as Slash, but still really lovely. I especially like how they've got some green paint on the new retooled head sculpt. I really wish that the Dino Mode would have had more of that green paint just to help it stand out, but what can you do? It, it is what it is. The chest has a lot of paint on it and it manages to have a different feel to Slash due to the paint apps they chose, which is a very nice touch. They've only got the grey paint on the legs, but Overall, it is quite nice, quite nice. There's not as much to say about this because it doesn't make as much of a statement as Slash, but it is still pretty damn good. And of course, articulation is pretty simple. You've got a swivel of the head, ball jointed shoulders that get much more range thanks to the new way that it's cut. Bicep swivel here, bend at the elbow. Unfortunately, no wrist or waist, but you do get ball joints here, thigh swivels, and a little bit of a toe bend that doesn't really do much there, unfortunately, but the, the articulation does get the job done. For a size comparison, here we have a standard Legion figure, a standard Legends figure, and yes, I'm once again realizing that Sea Spray is a bit of a chunky boy, and maybe I should have chosen a different figure for this year. A standard Siege Micromaster, a not-so-standard Lego minifigure, and Crumbs. So yes, overall they are kind of smaller in comparison to many of the Legends figures that we get these days, but because of that, the paint budget has definitely been upped, so yeah. I think it worked out in the end. Honestly, I don't think either one of these is better than the other. They're both fantastic figures for the size, and some of the best figures in the overall Prime Wars trilogy. The transformation is very nice, the implementation of the Titan slash Prime Master gimmick is still really, really good. The kibble is a little bit annoying, but hey, it's a Legends figure, what do you expect? I actually think these are the best out of their respective teams, because each of the teams, they aren't that great, and these shine well over them. Yes, there's no combined integration, but there doesn't need to be. They're just solid figures on their own, and for that, I am grateful. Power of the Primes may have been disappointing, but these figures are certainly not. There are some people who don't collect Mainline, though. There are some people who only collect Masterpiece and kind of shun the rest of the fandom. And I suppose there's nothing in this marathon for them, right? Right? Mm-hmm.